Good morning, how are you? I'm back here and I'm uh, answering some of your questions. Most of the questions are from readers of You Are the Universe, Discovering Your Cosmic Self and Why It Matters. Um, but you can ask me any question on any topic. The email where you should send your questions is uh, info at jio.com, info at jio.com, info at jio.com. And while you're at it, uh, please download the app, Jio. Uh, and you can also go on the computer and actually register on jio.com, J-I-Y-O, jio.com. And uh, this is our community. This is the Internet for Wellbeing. We bring you 25 or so experts in the area of nutrition, exercise, movement, yoga, meditation, breathing, uh, emotions, personal relationships, and so on. And this is uh, our community that hopefully will reach a critical mass one day so that we can aspire to a more peaceful, just, sustainable, healthier, and joyful world. So please download Jio on iTunes or through Android on your mobile device. Okay, so today's question comes from Sandra Morrison, and she says, I follow you daily on Facebook, and one of your followers recently asked, what or who is God? And you, uh, I believe, said it was our awareness. Uh, I should have then said it was awareness. Not just our awareness, but awareness um, as fundamental reality. Our awareness is a rivulet in that. While I never believed that God was a judgmental, revengeful God granting wishes to some and not to others, it makes me kind of sad that God isn't a separate entity from us. I also read Neil Donald Walsh and he said God is having uh, human experiences through us and not separate from us. I'm really having a hard time wrapping my head around who, what is God. Why do people still pray to God and why are there churches, not to mention mosques and temples and gurdwaras? I, I added that. Is the Bible a fallacy? Thank you so much. Best wishes, Sandra Morrison. So, uh, Sandra, it's time to address this question um, and uh, do it so slowly that we all understand what we are talking about. So, God, as usually described in religions, is... Um, a symbolic, symbolic um, expression of the infinite. See, the infinite cannot be conceptualized because then it wouldn't be the infinite. Um, that which is infinite is also formless, so it can't be seen. Um, that which is infinite is also that in which we experience space-time and causality. So space-time and the experience of objects, bodies, is all um, um, in a formless domain of awareness. Right now you're listening to this and what you're listening to is um, is my words, but these are being understood and absorbed by you in your consciousness. There's some kind of activity happening in the brain, but you are understanding this and absorbing it and reflecting on it in your consciousness. And that consciousness uh, doesn't have a form, otherwise you'd be able to see it. And that consciousness uh, can't uh, be touched, seen, heard, tasted, smelled, 
even thought of because as soon as you think about something, you create an image of it. So the consciousness in which all experience occurs, the experience of the body, the experience of the mind, the experience of the world, that consciousness where that experience occurs is without form. And because it is without form, it is also eternal. It has no beginning in time, no ending in time, no edges in space. And uh, yet it is the ground of all experience. My words are coming from there and your experience of listening to those words is also happening there. So all there is is consciousness modifying itself as experience. The experience can be a perceptual experience in which we case we call it a body and a physical world. The experience can be a mental experience as a thought or a feeling. Uh, or an image and then we call it a mental experience or the mind. But if you are with me so far, you'll realize that body, mind and universe are words invented by humans to, um, to um, modes of knowing to modes of understanding, to modes of experience in formless being. So, in that sense, mind, body and universe are constructs. They are mental constructs. Even the mind is a mental construct. It's an interpretation of a thought or an image given a name by human beings. No other animal uses these words. So in the same way as mind, brain, body and universe are human constructs, so too uh, when we speak of God generally, that's a human construct. Humans came up with the name God for the mystery of our existence. So actually Anything that has a name or a description um, is a human construct for a mode of knowing and experience in awareness. And that includes that which we call God. God is a human invention uh, in the same way as the universe, the body and the mind are human inventions in human consciousness or modes of knowing and experience. Then what is the truth? What is, what is the real reality? Is there God or is there uh, just the construct that we call God? I think that's uh, a very important um, uh, question. Is there God beyond the construct that we call God? Is there God beyond the construct that uh, we have invented uh, with the name God? I'll be back to, for that in 15 seconds. So I'm back here and uh, now I want to address this important concept um, uh, which is beyond the concept. Is there a reality beyond the construct? And the answer is um, yes. It, that reality is uh, where the construct itself arises. And so that reality is infinite being. In other words, uh, to answer Sandra Morrison's question, there is only God, period. There is only God. Everything else is an experience in a particular mode of consciousness which is finite. Infinite being cannot be seen, cannot be heard, cannot be tasted, smelled, thought of, imagined. So the infinite being localizes itself as a finite being. That means you me. And anything that um, 
any sentient being that can have an experience. So when you realize this, then you can see that God is experiencing himself, itself, herself as the entire universe through different species of consciousness, we being a human species that give labels to our experiences. But, you know, birds are having their own experience, elephants are having their own experience, uh, sparrows are having their own experience, honeybees are having their ex own experience, plants are having their own experience. Now they may not have constructs, they may not um, have labels, they may not have descriptions, but they're having experiences and they respond to those experiences and they reproduce and they evolve, just as we are evolving. So we are all species of consciousness. We can say we are all species of God. We are all species of div divinity. We are all species of the infinite being. But the infinite being knows itself as infinite knowers, infinite modes of knowing, and infinite uh, objects known. Infinite observers, infinite modes of observation, infinite... Um, objects observed, infinite seers, infinite ways of seeing, and infinite uh, varieties of scenery. And this is the evolution of experience in the infinite being that we call God. God is the only reality. God is also love, of course, because love means inseparability. So love, beauty, truth, God, divinity, beyond the constructs, is the only reality. Everything else is an evanescent experience in the reality that we call God. Sandra says, why do we pray? Well, we, we speak to our higher self. We speak to the infinite within us. Is the Bible a fallacy? The Bible is... Uh, partly revealed truth and partly cultural mythology, just like all other uh, religious texts, Bible, um, you know, all other religious texts um, that uh, come to us from ancient times are cultural mythologies. Humans trying their best to conceptualize the infinite, to um, give words and descriptions um, to um, the mystery of existence, which is God. Uh, so yes, most religions, all religion is cultural mythology, some of it outdated because, you know, these mythologies go back to the Bronze Age. Of course, now our biggest mythology is uh, science. We don't uh, realize that science is also a story. Science is a method of inquiry into the nature of reality. But as Werner Heisenberg, uh, the father of quantum mechanics, said, uh, nature does not reveal herself to us as she is, but to our method of questioning. Uh, what science does is it reveals to us nature as exposed to our method of questioning. Where is that uh, method of questioning? What has that need to know? What, that, uh, what has that need to know is the finite mind. The finite mind wants to know its infinite uh, source its infinite being. And it does so through systems of thought, whether we call them religion, theology, uh, philosophy, and today science. But as I've said many, many times, um, no system of thought can give us access to reality. We have to transcend thought. We have to go beyond subject-object split. 
we have to go to the level of being and there the truth is revealed to us. You and I are observers looking at the universe, but even that which we call the observer is an activity of that which we call the universe. So we are stardust beings, the total universe experiencing itself through a human nervous system, which is also an activity of the universe. But see, these are all words, stardust being, universe, brain. They are constructs for an ineffable mystery. Ineffable mystery. Can't be expressed in words. Going back to what Rumi said, God's language is silence. Everything else is poor translation. So here we are um, having this conversation, um, a poor translation. So what are these words that are coming across to you through cyberspace? These are symbolic expressions of my thoughts, signals, and those signals then um, get converted in your consciousness as thoughts. And we share in this uh, space called consciousness with these symbols, with these constructs. But behind these symbols is the infinite being, in a way, having a laugh. Finite beings trying to solve the mystery through symbols of their own invention. Okay, I hope, uh, Sandra, this satisfies you to some extent. So, see you tomorrow.